Inside Out and Back Again, Part 3, Alabama. We're giddy when we get off of the airplane. Our cowboy, who never takes off his tall, tall hat, delivers us to his huge house where grass uh, spreads out so green it looks painted. Stay until you feel ready. We smile and unpack the two outfits we each own. One look at our cowboy's wife's arm, lips, eyes contorted into knots, and we unpack. We sit and sleep in the lowest level of our cowboy's house where we never see the wife. I must stand on a chair that stands on a tea table to see the sun and the moon out a too high window. The wife insists we keep out of neighbor's eyes. Mother shrugs, more here than two mats on a ship. I wish she wouldn't try to make something bad better. She calls a family meeting. Until you children master English, you must think, do, wish for nothing else. Not your father, not our old home, not your old friends, not our future. She tries to mean it about our father, but I know at times words are just words. Brother Kwong says add an S to nouns to mean more than one, even if there's already an S sitting there. Glass, glasses. All day I practice squeezing hisses through my teeth. Whoever invented English must have loved snakes. Most food our cowboy brings us is wrapped in plastic or pushed into cans, while chicken and beef are chopped and frozen. We live on rice and soy sauce, canned corn. Today, our cowboy brings us a paper bucket of chicken, skin crispy and golden, smelling of perfection. Brother Koi recoils, vowing to never eat anything with wings. Our cowboy bites on a leg and grins to show teeth and gums. I wonder if he's so friendly because his wife is so mean. We bite. The skin tastes as promised, crunchy and salty, hot and spicy. The mother wipes the corners of her mouth before passing her piece into her napkin. Brother Vu gags. Our cowboy scrunches his brow, surely thinking, why are his refugees so picky? Brother Kwong forces a swallow before explaining we are used to fresh killed chicken that roams the yard, snacking on grains and worms, such meat tight in texture, smelling of meadows and tasting sweet. I bite down on a thigh, might as well bite down on bread soaked in water. Still, I force yum yum sounds. I hope to hide the horse, ride the horse our cowboy surely has. Green mats of grass in front of everyone's house, vast windows in front of sealed curtains, cement lanes where no one walks, big cars passed, not often, not a noise, clean, quiet, loneliness. Add an S to verbs acted by one person in the present tense, even if there's already an S sound nearby. She chooses, he refuses. I'm getting better at hissing no longer spitting on my forearms. Our cowboy is even taller, in an even taller hat, finds us in the house on Princess Anne Road, pays rent ahead three months. Mother could not believe his generosity until Brother Kwong says the American government gives sponsors money. Mother is even more amazed by the generosity by the American government until Brother Kwong says it is to ease the guilt of losing the war. Mother's face crinkles like paper on fire. She tells Brother Kwong to clamp his mouth shut. People living on others' goods bills can't afford political opinions. I inspect our house. Two bedrooms, one for my brothers and one for mother and me. A washing machine because no one here will scrub laundry in exchange for a bowl of rice. A stove spews out clean blue flames unlike the ashy coal ones back home. What I love best is a lotus pod shower where heavy drops will massage my scalp as if I were standing in a monsoon. What I don't love, pink sofas, green chairs, plastic cover on the table, stained mattresses, old clothes, unmatched dishes, all from cow to the friends of our cowboy. Even at our poorest, we always had beautiful furniture and matching dishes. Mother says to be grateful. I'm trying. As soon as we have an address, mother writes all the way to the north where father's brother anchors down the family line in their ancestral home. It's the first time mother has been allowed to contact anyone in the north since the country divided. It'll be the first time father's brother learns of his disappearance. 
unless father had sent word that he's safe after all. I shiver with hope. Always an exception. Do not add an S to certain nouns. One deer, two deer. Why no S for two deer, but an S for two monkeys? Brother Kwong says no one knows. So much for rules. Whoever invented English should have been bitten by a snake. I study the dictionary because of grass and trees. Don't grow faster just because I stare. I look up. Jane, not listed, sees, two eyeballs, something, spot, a stain, run, to move really fast, meaning eyeballs, stain, move. I throw the dictionary down and ask Brother Kwong, Jane is a name not in the dictionary. Spot is a common name for a dog. Jane sees Spot run. I can't read a baby book. Who will believe I was reading Nang And But then, who knows who he is here? Brother Kwong is tired of translating. Our sponsor takes me to register for school alone. As my personal cowboy for the day, he will surely let me ride his horse. I start to climb into his too tall truck, but his fingers walk in the air. This means I'm to walk to school. Turn right where the flowers big as dinner plates grow strangely blue. Turn left where the purple fluffy wands arch into tall bushes inviting butterflies. Sweat beads plump on my cowboy's upper lip. My armpits embarrass me. I must remember to not raise the reins high. We walk and walk on a road where the horizon keeps extending. Finally, we stop at a fat red brick building. Paperwork, paperwork with a woman who pats my head while shaking her own. I step back, hating pity. Having learned from mother that the pity giver feels better, never the pity receiver. On the walk home, I take a deep breath, forcing myself to say, You horse, he he he, I go go. My personal cowboy shakes his head. I repeat myself and gallop. He scrunches his face. I say horse in he, 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 until my throat hurts. And we get home. Brother Kwong has to translate after all. No, Mr. Johnson doesn't have a horse, nor has he ever ridden one. What kind of cowboy is he? To make it worse, the cowboy explains horses here go nay, 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 not he, he, he. No, they don't. Where am I? Some verbs switch all over just because. I am, she is, they are, he was, they were. Would be simpler if English and life were logical. Starting tomorrow, everyone must leave the house. Mother starts sewing at a factory and Brother Kwong begins repairing cars. The rest of us must go to school repeating the last grade left unfinished. Brother Vu wants to be a cook or teach martial arts, not waste a year as the oldest senior. Mother says one word, college. Brother Koi gets an old recycled bicycle to ride, but mother says I'm too young for one, even though I'm 10 years old in the fourth grade when everyone else is nine. Mother says worry instead of getting sleep because from now on, no more naps. You will eat lunch at school with friends. What friends? You'll make some. What if I can't? You will. What will I eat? What do your friends eat? What will, but what will I eat? Be surprised. I hate surprises. Be agreeable. Not without knowing what I'm agreeing to. Mother sighs and walks away. School. I wake up dragonflies zipping through my gut. I eat nothing. I take each step towards school evenly, trying to hold my stomach steady. It helps that the morning air glides cool like a constant washcloth against my face. Deep breaths. I'm the first student in class. My new teacher has brown curls looped tight to her scalp like circles in a beehive. She points to her chest. Miss Scott's saying it three times each louder with ever more spit. I repeat, Miss Scott's carefully to hiss every S. She doesn't seem impressed. I tap my own chest. Ha. She, but she must have heard ha. And in a very funny ha, 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 she fakes a laugh. I repeat, ha. And I wish I knew enough English to tell her to listen for the diacritical mark, the one directing the tone downward. My new teacher tilts her head back and fakes an even sadder laugh.
I face a class. Miss Scott speaks. Each classmate says something. I don't understand, but I see. Fire hair on skin dotted with spots. Fuzzy dark hair on skin shiny as lacquer. Hair the color of root on milky skin. Lots of braids of chocolate milk. White hair on a pink boy. Honey hair with orange ribbons on see-through skin. Hair barrettes of all colors on bronze bread. I'm the only straight black haired on olive skin. The bell rings and everyone stands. I stand. They line up. So do I. Down the hall, turn left, take a tray, receive food, and sit. On one side of the bright, noisy room, light skin, other side, dark skin. Both laughing and chewing as if it never occurred to them that someone medium would show up. I don't know where to sit, any more than I know how to eat the pink sausage snuggled inside bread shaped like a corn cob smeared with sauces, yellow and red. I think they're making fun of the Vietnamese flag until I remember no one here likely knows that flag's color. I put down the tray and wait in the hallway. Another bell, another line, this time outside. Every part of the rainbow surrounds me, shouting and pushing. A pink boy with white hair on his head and white eyebrows and white eyelashes pulls my arm. Laughter. It's true my arm hair grows long and black. Maybe he's curious about my long black arm hair like I was curious about the golden fuzz on the arm of the rescue ship sailor. He pokes my cheek, howls from everyone. He pokes my chest. I see nothing but squeezed eyes and twisted mouths. No, they're not curious. I want to pluck out every white hair to see if the boy's scalp matches his pink of his face. I wish this, but walk away. The pink boy and two loud friends follow me home. I count each step to walk faster. I won't let them see me run. I count in English, forcing it to the front of my mind. I can't help but glance back. The pink boy shouts, showing a black hole while sharp teeth glow. I walk faster, count faster in English. Not that I care to understand what pink boy says, but I have to if I'm to laugh back at him one day. Brother Koi is home, not talking. We sit together shelling peanuts. I keep my day inside. Mother comes home with two fingers wrapped in white. The electric machine so fast. Brother Kwong comes home and throws down his uniform shirt, goes to the bathroom. At dinner, his fingernails are still rimmed in black oil. Brother Vu comes in whistling. He eats two, three, four pork chops. I eat one, two chops. I have a, feel I have a feeling having muscles makes whistling possible. I sneak into Brother's room. The full moon shines on the bulkiest lump. I shake it away outside. Brother Vu swats my hand, but follows me. Moonlight turns us silver. I pulled my arm hair, or they pulled my arm hair. They threw rocks at me. They promised to stomp on my chest. Brother Vu yawns. A boy did pull my arm hair. Brother Vu pats my head. Ignore him. It's not like I follow him around. Why are you whistling? Someone called me Ching Chong. Is that good? It didn't sound good. And then he tripped me. So I flew up and almost scissor kicked him in the face. You missed? I wanted him to stop, not hurt him. I didn't even like seeing him scared. I would have kicked him. Teach me to fly kick, please. Not with your temper. I shout, I'm so mad. I should have just run away. Tears come. Brother Vu has always been afraid of my tears. I'll teach you defense. How will that help me? He smiles huge, so certain of himself. You'll see. Next morning, halfway down the block, away from Mother's eyes, I hear clink clink of my brother's Koi's bicycle. He stops and pats the upper bar of the triangle frame. I sit side saddle, holding on to the handlebar, the edges of our hands touch. As we glide away, I ask, every day? I feel his chin nod on the top of my head. After school, too? Another chin nod. We glide as if I am floating. Miss Scott points to me and then to the English letters of the alphabet. I say A, B, C, and so on. She tells the class to clap. I frown. Miss Scott points to the numbers along the wall. I count up to 20. The class claps on its own. 
I'm furious, unable to explain. I've already learned fractions and how to purify river water. So this is what dumb feels like. I hate, hate, hate it. I wish Brother Coy wouldn't keep inside how he endures the hours in school. For mother wouldn't hide her bleeding, that mother wouldn't hide her bleeding fingers. That Brother Coy would be so uh, angry after work. I wish our cowboy could be persuaded to buy a horse that I could be invisible till I can talk back, that English could be learned without so many rules. I wish father would appear in my class speaking beautiful English as he does French and Chinese and hold out his hand for mine. Mostly, I wish they were, I were still smart. Brother Vu now makes everyone call him Vu Li, a name I must say without giggling to get defense lessons. I need the lessons. I'm hiding in class by staring at my shoes. I'm hiding during lunch in the bathroom eating hard rolls saved from dinner. I'm hiding during outside time in the same bathroom. I'm hiding uh, after school until Brother Koi rides up on our secret corner. With Vu Li, I squat down in Dong Tong, weight on legs, back straight, arms to the side, fingers relaxed, eyes everywhere at once. I'm practicing to be seen. Eggs explode like smears of snot on our front door. Just dumb kids, says our cowboy. Bathroom paper hangs like ghosts from our willows. More dumb kids, says the cowboy. A brick shatters the front window, landing on our dinner table along with a note. Brother Kwong refuses to translate. Mother shakes her head when Vu Li pops his muscle. Our cowboy calls the police who tells us to stay inside. Hogwash, our cowboy says, then spits a brown blob of tobacco. I repeat, hogwash, puckering for an ending of shh. Mother decides to, we must meet our neighbors. Our cowboy leads us, each uh, giving us a cowboy hat to be tilted while saying, good morning. Only I wear the hat. In the house, to our right, a bald man closes his door. Next to him, a woman with yellow hair slams hers. Next to her, shouts reach us from behind a door unopened. Redness crawls across my brother's faces, and mother pats their backs. Our cowboy leads us to our house on the left, us to a house on our left. An older woman throws up her arms and hugs us. We're so startled, we stand like trees. She points to her chest, Miss Washington. She holds our cowboy and kisses him. I thought only husbands and wives did that one alone. We found out that Miss Washington is a widow and retired teacher. She has no children but a dog named Lassie and a garden that takes up her backyard. She volunteers to tutor us all. My time with her will be right after school. I'm afraid to tell her how much help I'll need. Miss Washington has her own rules. She makes me memorize one new word a day and practice it ten times in conversation. For every new word that sticks to my brain, she gives me fruit in bite sizes, drowning in sweet white fluff, cookies with drops of chocolate small as rain, flat round pan fried cakes floating in syrup. My vocabulary grows. She makes me learn rules I've never noticed, like A, an, and the, which act as little megaphones to tell the world whose English is still secondhand. The house is red, but we live in a house. A, an, and the do not exist in Vietnamese, and we understand each other just fine. I pout, but Miss Washington says every language has annoyances and illogical rules, as well as sensible beauty. She has an answer for everything, just like Mother. I now understand when they make fun of my name, yelling ha 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 down the hall. When they ask if I eat dog meat, barking and chewing and falling down laughing. When they wonder if I lived in the jungle with tigers growling and stalking on all fours. I understand because Brother Coy nodded into my head on a bike ride home when I asked if the kids did the same thing at his school. I understand and wish I could go back to not understanding. Our cowboy says our neighbors would be more like neighbors if we agreed to do something at the Delray Southern Baptist Church. 
I've seen the church name on a sign where blaring yellow sun rays spell God. Our cowboy and his wife wait for us in the very first row. He's smiling. She's not. A pl plump man runs onto the stage shouting. Everyone except us greets him. Hallelujah. He, the more he shouts, the more everyone sings hallelujah. Later, a woman smelling of honeysuckle signals for us to follow. Mother and I are told to change our shape into shapeless white gowns. We line up in the hallway too bright and too bare where our brothers await us frowning, all wearing the same shapeless white gowns. I giggle. Mother pinches, then steps forward first. The plump man waits for her in a tiny pool. One hand holds her nose, another hand on her back, pushing her under. I start to jump into the pool, but Mother is standing again, coughing, hair matted to her face, air eyes narrowing at me. Each of my brothers get dipped. My turn comes in, no matter how I laser eye Mother to stop it. And yet, it's not over. We must get dressed and line up on stage next to the plump man, our cowboy and his smiling wife. Her lips curl up even more as people line up to kiss our cheeks. Drops from our wet hair drip down my back. Bumps enlarge on my chill skin as I realize we will be coming back every Sunday. Mother taps her nails on the dining room table, her signal for solitude to chant. I shuffle off to our room, but I am still with her through my ears. Mother chants, Nam du adopat, nam o kwan a putat. Such quiet tones after a day of shouts of hallelujahs. Clang, clang, clang. The mother chimes at the glass bowl. Nothing like a clear stream of bell echoes from a brass gong. Instead of jasmine incense, mother dry, uh, burns dried orange peels and ashy bitter citrus invades our room. Nothing like the floral wafts that once calms me. I try, but I can't fall asleep. Instead, a kneading amethyst twirls in her lavender scents. I'm not as good as mother at making do. Finally, she comes in and turns for me, her signal for more time alone. I lie frozen, sniffing for traces of lavender. Too faint, yet I dared not to roll closer. She sighs and extends it into a sniffle. Where are you? Should we keep hoping? She thinks I'm asleep. More sniffles, so gentle, I would miss them by inhaling too deeply. Come home, come home and see how our children have grown. All my life I've wondered what it's like to know someone forever, then poof, he's gone. Another sigh, it's more difficult here than I imagined. I thought so, despite her rule, mother can't help yearning for father every any more than I can help tasting ripe papaya in my sleep. Sometimes the spelling changes when adding an S. Knife becomes knives. Sometimes a C is used instead of a K, even if it makes more sense for cat to be spelled cat. Sometimes a Y is used instead of an E, even if it makes more sense for moldy to be spelled moldy. Whoever invented English should have learned to spell. Our cowboy likes to bring us gifts. The breathing catfish was mother's favorite. I couldn't watch Vu Lee kill and clean it, but it tasted so good. After getting us dipped to church, our cowboy brought us gifts even more often. Vu Lee asks, always asks for beef jerky, pointing at his muscles. I prefer really fat grapes. Today, our cowboy brings us chips and chocolates. My brothers and I finish the chips in a flash. Later, mother throws away what's left of the candy. After she falls asleep, I retrieve the bars. They'll be better than the heart rolls for lunch. My word for the day is delicious. It's delicious. Ms. Washington asks, what's your lunch? Was your lunch delicious? Before speaking, I had to translate in my head. She waits. I eat candy in toilet. Miss Washington looks panicked. What? I realized my mistake. Oh, the toilet. She doesn't look any happier. I add, not candy all time, but you always eat in the bathroom? I nod. Why? How can I explain dragonflies doing somersaults in my stomach whenever I think of the noisy room full of mouths chewing and laughing? 
I'm still translating when her eyes get red. I'll pack you a lunch and you can eat at your desk. No eat in class. I'll fix that. Things will get better. Just you wait. I don't believe her, but it feels good that somebody knows. At lunch the rest or the next day, I stayed in class. Ms. Scott nods. Can it be that e this easy? Inside my first brown paper bag, a white meat sandwich, an apple, crunchy curly things sprinkled with salt, and a cookie dotted with chocolate raindrops. Something salty, something sweet? Perfect. I hear pounding footsteps in the long hall. I stop chewing. Two students run into the class giggling. I firm my muscles, ready for the giggles to explode into laughter thrown at me, but smiles appear instead. The girl has red hair swaying on the bottom of the skirt that falls to her calves. She says, Pam. I hear Pim. A boy of coconut shelled skin is dressed better than for church. A purple bow tie, a white, white shirt that won't wrinkle even if he rolled down a hill. His shaved head is so shiny and perfect, I want to touch it. His, he speaks slowly and loudly, but I don't mind because he's still smiling. He says Stephen, but I hear Sis Stephen. I have not seen them in class, but then I mostly stare at my shoes. I will write in my journal October 14th is the most relieved day, as I've noted April 30th was Saigon is God Day, and September 2nd is the longest day ever. Though I was saving the most relieved day for Father's return when he could have the title, my life's best day. Pink Boy stares at the stands at the board. He can't multiply 18 by 42. I go to the board and chalk the answers in five moves. My cheekbones lift to the ceiling until I see horror on the faces of Pam and Stephen. Pink Boy is glowing red against white hair, white eyebrows, and white eyelashes. Miss Scott nudges me towards my seat. Pim reaches for my hand, hers trembling. I know Pink Boy will get me, but right now, I feel smart. One day, the honey-haired girl takes her pink ribbons and knots pigtails in my hair. She stares and shakes her head and yanks back her ribbons. Pink doesn't look good on you. Then three girls of bronze bread skin remove colorful barrettes from their hair and twists onto my head so many braids. The girl's hair holds the shape of braids even without barrettes. Pem and Steven nod, so I, so I keep still. Walking home, my shadow shows eels dancing on my head with tails and shapes of bows and stars and hearts. Brother and brothers notice, and pause, then go on with their day. It isn't easy to pile on a plastic, to sleep on a pile of plastic barrettes. The next morning when the girls slip off barrettes, my hair falls back to being straight. The girls yank my flat strands and walk away. I've spent my life wishing for long hair, and this is what I get. Fu Li no longer has time just for me. At sunrise, he throws new papers on porches. After school, he flips perfect circles of beef. At sunset, he teaches Bruce Lee moves in our front yard. We line up in five rows, squatting and shifting the only moves he has taught us. I make sure to get in the front row. First came the eager boys, next the giggly girls, then came our neighbors who couldn't help their curiosity. They wave back now, at times bringing jiggly, colorful food that we don't eat. Everyone in Vuli's class wears yellow. Some even brought suits exactly like Bruce Lee's. Brother Kwong and Koi joined too. Once I saw my mother behind the curtain smiling. I squatted low and sturdy then. Miss Scott shows the class photographs of a burned naked girl running and crying down a dirt road, of people climbing and screaming desperate to get on the last helicopter out of Saigon of skeletal refugees crammed aboard a sinking fishing boat reaching up to the heavens for help, of mounds of combat boots abandoned by soldiers of the losing side. She's telling the class where I'm from. She should have shown something about papayas and tent. No one would believe me, but at times I would choose wartime in Saigon over peacetime in Alabama. Pam is dressed in a skirt to the floor like the pioneers in her textbook. Stephen wears a beard like President Lincoln. I don't know today, I didn't know today was pretend day. 
Pink Boy keeps asking, what are you? By the end of school, he yells at Angela. She's a pancake. She has a pancake face. It doesn't make sense until it does. I run, hearing laughter loud, 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 while still echoes when Mother comes home. I can't keep the day inside anymore. Mother asks, what's a pancake? Tears gush because I can't make myself explain a pancake. It's very, very flat. Mother strokes my head, chant, my child, breathe in, peaceful mind, breathe out, peaceful smile. She strokes my back, chant, my daughter, your whispers will balloon and shelter you from words you need not hear. Chant, namu adidatat, namu kwan a patat. She strokes my arm, I chant, wanting the gentle strokes to continue forever. I chant, wanting mother's calmness to sink into me. I'm quiet during my lesson with Miss Washington. For a long time, I stare at the floral wallpaper and shelves full of books that I notice a framed photograph of a boy in uniform. I had not known that her son Tom, or of his death as a 20-year-old soldier in a very place where I was born. I never thought the name of my country could sound so sad. I'm afraid to look at Miss Washington. You hate me? Child, child. She comes close and hugs me. Right then I tell her about the pancake and she hugs me tighter and then pulls out a book, a photograph, a book of photographs, a dragon dance at Tet, schoolgirls in white adas, a temple built on a tree trunk. Tom had sent home these photographs of a hot green country that he loved and hated just the same. I suck in a breath, a photograph, a photograph of a papaya tree swaying broad and fan-like leaves, and a full sun showing off a bundle of fat orange piglets. Excited, I yell, doo-doo! Cheese, I'm stabbing the page at the image. Best food, papaya? Her favorite food is papaya? By the time I teach her doo-doo, she is teaching me doo-doo. We're laughing so hard, we're hungry for pancakes. She tells me to take the book home. Before school, our cowboy shows up. Miss Washington told him about the pancake. He whispers to mother and brother Kwong, all will escort me to school with Miss Washington. I don't feel good. In the principal's office sits pink boy and his mother. It's very hot in there. Lots of strained voices holding in anger. Finally, all eyes are on pink boy who wrestles out sorry. I feel like throwing up. Mother rescues him. We're no... We know you're from a proper family and didn't realize the damage of your insult. My brother Kwong translates, pink eyes, pink boy's eyes, let me know he hates me even more. Miss Scott shows photographs of the S shape in Vietnam, of green mountains and the long beaches and the statue of Buddha reclining. She asks me, would you like to say anything? I know Buddha. I hear laughter and a murmur building, Buddha, Buddha. Miss Scott hushes them. All day I hear whispers, Buddha, Buddha. I watch the clock and listen for the final bell and dash. Pink boy and friends follow, releasing shouts of Buddha, Buddha, as I put one leg in front of the other, faster and faster, but not fast enough to hear them scream, Buddha, Buddha. I turn down the wrong street away from the corner where Brother Koi would be. I have no choice but to run. I turn right where purple flowers curve like baby moons over butterfly bushes. Footsteps pound right behind me. Turn left where flowers grow blue. I wish I could control it, but the plates of flowers are now blue smears from my near tears. Buddha, Buddha, breathes into the back of my neck. Faster and faster, my legs try, but the shouts are upon me. Someone pulls my hair, forcing me to turn and see a black hole in a pink place. Buddha, Buddha, girl. My palms cover my eyes and I run. All the while surging from my gut, fire, sourness, weight, anger, loneliness, confusion, embarrassment, shame. I don't make it inside the house, but I sit under the willow tree and dig a hole and into it. I scream and scream and scream. I hate everyone. A lion's paw rips up my throat. Still, I scream. I hate everyone. Hands grip my shoulders. Miss Washington is on her knees. Child, child. I hate everyone. 
She hoists me up by my armpits and drags me across the yard. You poor child. Tell me, tell me. It hurts so much to keep screaming, but it feels so good to thrash about like a captured lizard. Inside her house, Miss Washington throws her body online. Hush, hush, hush. She says it over and over like a chant, slowly, slowly the screams that never stopped inside my head cool to a real whisper. I hate everyone, even your mama. She crosses her eyes and puckers her lips. I stop myself from laughing. She pats my hand. That one gesture dissolves the last of my hate spell. Brother Kwong comes home with happy shouts. He did it! Preparing a car no one else could. From now on, he used to work only on engines. Mother smiles so hard she cries. I pout. When is it going to be my turn? It's time to tell Mother why misery keeps pouncing on me. I used to buy less pork so I could buy fried dough. I know. You do? What else? I used to like making the girl who shared my desk cry. She tilts her head. I know, Mother. I know. Very bad. She nods. Now they make me cry. Will I be punished forever? Forever is quite long. There's more. It's really bad. She lifts an eyebrow. At dawn, on tête, I taps my big toe on the tile floor first. She widens her eyes. I hate being told I can't do something because I'm a girl. She doesn't scold me. She just nods. Did I ruin the luck of the whole family? Is that why we're here? My child, how you shoulder the world. I was superstitious, that's all. If anything, you gave us good luck because we got out of here and we're here. Lucky to be here? Just wait, you'll see. I don't want to wait. It's awful now. It is, is it really so unbearable? They chase me. They yell Buddha, Buddha at me. They pull my arm hair. They call me pancake face. They clap at me in class. And you want me to wait? Can I hit them? Oh, my daughter. At times you have to fight, but preferably not with your fists. Brother Kwan takes us to the grocery store. Mother buys everything to make egg rolls for a coming holiday where Americans eat turkey the size of a baby. She asks me if the butcher, she has me ask the butcher, please grind our pork. I'm sure I said it right, but the butcher sharpens his face and slams down his meat and motions us away. Mother wrinkles her brows, thinking and pausing and reads the buzzer again. Please, she says, but it comes out, peace. The butcher turns away without a word. Mother presses the butcher for a long time. The butcher returns. I hear a lot of Vietnamese and a voice stern and steady from eyes ever more so. Mother ends with a clear, now. The butcher stares and takes her meat to the grinder. Again, they're yelling, Buddha, Buddha. But I know to run towards Brother Koi two corners away. Enough time for them to repeat hundreds of Buddhas. Every time for me to turn and yell, Jesus, Jesus. Look how they stop, mouths open. My heart's lifting and I run and shout, bully, coward, peak, snot face. When I learned from them, words I learned from them on the playground. I turn to see Pink Boy coming close to me. No longer pink, he's red. Blood orange red, like a ripe papaya. Doo-doo face. It's not my fault. If my hair, my friends hear doo-doo face and are laughing right at him. Brother Koi is waiting. I jump on. Friday, Stephen hears from Pam, who heard it from the honey hair girl, who heard it from the dot on face girl, who heard it from the white hair boy, who heard it from all three girls in braids, that pink boy has got his sixth grade cousin, a girl two heads taller than the tallest of us, with arm muscles that run up and down like mice to agree to beat me up when they come back. I don't have to tell Brother Koi when, who we heard who heard in the halls of his school that my face is to be flat and flatter tomorrow. You don't have a flat face, he says. Besides, I have a plan. Five minutes to the last bell, I lean towards the door, legs bouncing, and books lift off the floor. Ring! I run and Pem and Steven close behind. Outside, Pem and I exchange coats with hoods. 
Pem heads down my usual path and I zip to the left. Steven stays to block the door. Running so fast, I fly above the sidewalk alone. They must all be with Pim. I stop at the new corner where Brother Coy said to wait. Where is he? Footsteps explode from the street that smacks into mine. Pink Boy. Pink Boy plows towards me. I squat in the Dung Tan facing him. His right arm extends in a fist. When he's close enough for me to see the white arm hair, I shift my upper body to the left, legs sturdy, eyes on the blur that fly past me. A thud. Pink Boy writhes on the pavement. I thought I would love seeing him in pain, but he looks more defeated than me, more helpless than scared, like a caged puppy. He's getting up. If I were to kick him, it must be now. A roar. Pink Boy and I turn a gigantic motorcycle. The rider in all black stops. A helmet comes off. Vuli! Wow! Pink Boy disappears. Brother Koi runs up out of breath, pushing a bicycle with a flat. Vu Li flicks his, uh, flicks his head. I climbed on first and wrapped my arms around his waist tight as a rope. Brother Koi climbs on next, one hand holding the left handle part of his bike, and we fly home. Vu Li now picks me up after school. So someone is always saving lunch sheets for me, Pam, and Steven. Someone's always inviting us to a party. Someone's always hoping Boo Lee will offer her a ride as he did the huge cousin who now not only smiles, but waves at us. Pink boy awards us. We're glad. Mother invites our cowboy, Miss Washington, for egg rolls. They brought gifts, not saying early Christmas, not wanting to embarrass us for not having anything to exchange. From our cowboy to mother, to just caught catfish. To brother Kwong, tuition for night college. To Vu Li, jerky in 10 flavors. To Brother Koi, two fighting fish in separate jars. To me, a new coat. We laugh and say, perfect. From Miss Washington, to Mother, a gong in jasmine incense. To Brother Kwong, an engineering textbook. To Vu Li, jerky in 10 flavors. To Brother Koi, a hamster. To me, three packages of something orange and dried. My family claps and says, perfect. And I frown. Three pouches of dried papaya. Chewy, sugary, waxy, sticky. Not the same at all. I'm so mad. I throw it all in the trash. Mother slaps my hand and learns to compromise. I refuse to retrieve the pouches and pout and go to bed. I stare at the photographs of the real papaya tree and wonder if I'll ever taste the sweet, tender orange flesh again. Gong rings out, so soothing, the real gong sounds. Swirls of incense reach me, hovering like a blanket, tugging me in. I wake up in a faint light, guilt heavy on my chest. I head towards the trash can. Yet on the dining table, a plate sits stripes of, strips of papaya, gooey and damp, and have been soaked in hot water. The sugar is melted off, leaving plump, moist, chewy bites. Mm, not the same, but not bad after all. 